baseballs in areas of this stadium I don't think that have seen baseballs before. Isn't that what they called the old place, Fulton County Stadium, the yeah. launching pad? Launching it's pad. Much more of a pitcher's park outside on Kosuke Fukudome. 38 doubles last year, most by a Japanese born player in the National League, a swing and a miss as he starts season number three with the Cubs. And really, all three outfielders know that if they go through any prolonged slumps early on, Tyler Colvin's going to see more time. Lou is going to make an effort to get the rookie Colvin hopefully a couple of starts this week. Low working quickly. Three and one. Wants to check with uh, Jim Wolf as third to see if Kosuke swung at it, and he did not. Yeah, Derek Lowe is asking, where was the pitch? Pretty good looking sinker on the outside corner, but comes a count to three and one for Kosuke. Slice foul. All kinds of action around the majors already started, and much more later tonight. Red Sox came back, beat the Yankees late last night. It was so late, I couldn't even stay up and watch the finish. Oh, brother. Talk about watching paint dry. The Red Sox and the Yankees opening day. I think both teams were trying to turn it into a five-hour game. And a base hit to right. So, Fukudome with the Cubs' first hit of the new season. Well, any player, I don't care how long you've been in the major leagues, how long you've been with your ball club, you love to get off to a good start of the season, and there's no better way than a clean line drive into right field to start the season for Kosuke Fukudome. And to bring up Derek Lee. Quiet spring, he hit 175, but coming off a fantastic year last year. Career best, 111 knocked in. His numbers for last season. Derek Lee carrying a 400 batting average in his career against Derek Lowe in 30 at bats. Well, these pitchers are going to be working up a lather today, just sitting down on the field for about 15 minutes in the sun. I was uh, working up a pretty good sweat. But don't worry, partner. I packed my deodorant. <laughs> 3 and 0 on Lee. Well, you're used to high temperatures and high humidity when you come to Atlanta. Normally not this time of year, but uh, hey, all things considered, you couldn't ask for a better opening day. Ball four. So low has been around the plate, but just missing a few times, and the Cubs have two on for cleanup man Aramis Ramirez. And Alfonso Soriano in particular have really enjoyed hitting in this ballpark. Aramis with over 100 at bats and a 352 average here at Turner Field. And he gets a hold of one out of the deep right center. McLeod, the gold lover, a couple of years ago, is over to make the play. He's battling a sore hamstring. Another ball hit to the gap in right center, much like Ryan Terrios. I thought that ball was going to carry a little better out that direction, but McLeod able to get underneath, call off the rookie right fielder, and make the play. Two down, and it brings up Marlon Bird, who's played a lot of games in this park as a visiting player with the Philadelphia Phillies and the Washington Nationals. Lowe's first pitch really got in on him. Bird's hands and he pulled it foul. Is that one you just fight it off? That ball continued to dive in closer and closer to the hands of Marlon Bird. You see that quick adjustment he had to make, but when you do that, chances are you're going to pull the ball foul down that third baseline. Derek Lowe will turn 37 on June 1st. The 0-1 pitch. 
Very deep to center. McLeod going back, and he'll look up. Gone! Marlon Byrd in his Cubs debut with a three-run homer to center. What a way to start the season. Nation Marlon Bird. Actually, he went down and got it. Put that ball to straight away center field. He knew he touched it off pretty good as it came off the bat. It just cleared the fence out there just to the right of straight away center field. Outstanding. And he got around the bases very quickly. One of the knocks. Uh, Marlon, the free agent over the winter, as Soriano didn't mean to. Who's going to take it? Chipper Jones, but he ran into Escobar. Still has time to get Soriano. Everybody wondered how will Marlon Bird do it now he's not in Texas. Well, in a pitcher's ballpark, his first at bat as a Chicago Cub, a three run homer as Carlos Zambrano takes the mound. Yunel Escobar getting better and better every year. Hayward with his major league debut. We mentioned McLeod in center and low on the mound. And let's check out how the Cubs take the field defensively behind Big Z. Brought to you by Pepsi. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. Soriano, Bird, Fukudome across the outfield. Ramirez, Terry Fontno, Lee across the infield. Giovanni Soto behind the dish today for the big right-hander, Carlos Zambrano. In the long 135-year history of the Cubs, this is a record sixth straight opening day start for Carlos. Ball one on Cabrera. Make it ball two just outside. In his fifth try last year, he got his first win on opening day. That was in Houston. Got a first inning home run in that one. A leadoff blast from Alfonso Soriano. Cabrera, a switch hitter, and will be getting a World Series ring in his time with the Yankees. Matt Diaz will get most of the starts in left against left handers. Nicely done. Give it to that kid right in front of you. I think the kid caught it. Good hands. Missed up its full three and two. Martin Prado is on deck. There it is. This will drop foul. Marlon Bird's home run makes him the first Cub to homer in his first at bat as a Cub since Henry Rodriguez did it in 1998. Oh, Henry. Oh, Marlon. So we've talked a lot about Marlon Bird throughout spring training and what he's going to bring to the ball club. I'll tell you, Lynn, as uh, Zambrano delivers ball four to Cabrera, one thing I think that will be a huge improvement is the fact that Marlon Bird is not afraid to take charge in center field. He feels like anything he can get to is his ball. If not, he'll let the corner outfielders know that he wants them to take it. Very much a captain in center field. Here's the second baseman, Prado. It really is the case with every lineup in baseball, but we have to say it, with a lineup including Chipper Jones and Brian McCann, you really have to get these top two guys out as often as possible. Chipper in particular with one of the keenest eyes in all of baseball. He's going to make you work. Swing and a miss as Cabrera fake towards second. It just changes so many things about the game, Len, when you have runners on base, especially runners that might steal a base. Changes the way the defenders line up, especially those middle infielders. Changes the pitches that Giovanni Soto will call to give himself an opportunity to throw out a runner and certainly changes the delivery of the pitcher. has got to be a little bit quicker. Carlos 
Lewis is still only 28. In fact, he shares a birthday with Derek Lowe. But he's eight years younger than the Braves starter. Big Z at 6'5", 260. Close at first, but Cabrera got back in. Neither of these two teams uses a stolen base a ton. Yeah, the Braves stole 16 down in the Grapefruit League in 30 ball games. Much like the Cubs under Lou Pinella, I would venture to say that a lot of those were hit and runs where the batter either swung through the ball or missed a sign and the guy just went ahead and stole the base. Bobby very much a believer in just letting his hitter swing the bat. Of course, you get down to the bottom of the order and you have the eight hitter and the pitcher to deal with. He might do something down there, but uh, this is a let him swing kind of an offense. Shot the other way and it's going to drop. Fukudome will get it back in quickly, but not before Cabrera gets all the way to third. So that scenario we talked about avoiding has reared its ugly head right off the bat. Jones coming up with two on and nobody out. Prado just reaches out there and pokes this pitch into right field. Fortunate that it only ended up a single. That was a hanging slider right over the middle of the plate, but the defensive swing results in a base hit. Jason Cabrera all the way around the third. Now Chipper Jones coming off one of the worst years of what's been a fantastic career. He was trying to tie it with that swing. 0 and 1. And you would definitely trade a double play ground ball for a run right here just to avoid the big inning. Good throw to first. And Prado just back in time. You saw Jones's numbers. They weren't bad, but when you compare them to what you're used to seeing from Chipper Jones, average way down. And then he pops it up. Terrio going out. Still backpedaling. Can't catch it. Everybody's going to be safe. And it's three to one. Bert Alfonso Soriano playing deep, respecting the power of Chipper Jones. Ryan Terrio playing in double play depth, so that ball had plenty of room to drop between out there in shallow center field as the Braves are on the board. Now Brian McCann has been the top offensive catcher in baseball since 2006. And right off the bat, we find out if this is the new Z. Able to keep his emotions in check. Solid numbers last year for McCann. Four All-Star appearances in his first four years in the major leagues. Larry Rothschild, the Cubs pitching coach, senior member of the Cubs staff in his ninth year with the Cubs. Broke his bat again. This could be some trouble. Bird and Fontenot. Nobody's going to get this one. And they are loaded up for Troy Gloss. Boy, another bad break for Zambrano. That was a literal break as McCann splintered his bat. And Larry's going to have to come out. Now you can clearly hear that bat break at contact. And once again, outfielders respecting McCann's power. Infielders playing at double play depth. He dunks it in there just in front of Marlon Bird. Bird bobbled it momentarily, but got on the ball quickly, got it back into the infield to hold Prado at third base. So a leadoff walk, an opposite field single, and then back to back bloopers. Z was very good early on in games last year, but he's in. Major trouble in facing a guy, Troy Gloss, who has hit two career homers against Z in just 10 at bats. Here's a pitch called strike. 
Just 14 games for Gloss with the Cardinals last year coming back from right shoulder surgery. Fairly new to first base. Here's the 0 1, swing and a miss, 0 and 2. He's got a long swing. He's got a home run type swing. And really won't catch up to most good fastballs unless the count's in his favor, 2 and 0, 3 and 1, where he can cheat a little bit, get that bat started early. Especially fastballs on the inner part of the plate. A kick in the 0 2, he struck him out. 94 on the fastball. That's a big first out. Now double play ball can get him out of the inning. Three fastballs, three strikes. Big out right there. Now one ground ball at his defenders away from getting out of this inning. Yunel Escobar was deadly in this spot last year. 373 with runners in scoring position, putting him in the top three in the majors. Enough action for you here in the first inning of the season. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Whew. That's a strike. Now we always search through the numbers to look for something encouraging, and the Braves hit into the second most double plays of any National League team in spring training this year. So we'll hang our hat on that one. Up the middle. Nobody gets it. Braves are possibly going to tie it. Yep, they get two on an RBI single by Escobar. And just like that, we're back where we started. It's 3-3. And another ball that wasn't hit particularly hard, but well placed. Well, you said it before, Len. This inning is really going to test Carlos Zambrano and his ability to keep his cool. He has not been hit hard in this inning. Prado with a little floater into right field. Jones and McCann with broken bat floaters into shallow center field. Now Escobar with a seeing eye ground ball base hit. Got to keep your cool. And a much anticipated first career plate appearance for right fielder Jason Hayward, the consensus number one prospect in all of baseball. Excellent eye at the plate. He's only 20 years old, and the Braves had no choice but to put him on the opening day roster and insert him in right. Ridiculous power. He's a local guy from nearby McDonough, Georgia. Left 75 pass tickets for today's ball game, so his uh, his fan club is definitely here. 65240, and that is legit. Saw him in the Braves dugout. He is very tall, wide shoulders, and he just hit a three run homer in his first career plate appearance, and it's 6 3 Atlanta. What a debut for Jason Hayward. That was a no-doubter. Whoa. What a quick swing for a big man. He drove that ball to the back of the Braves bullpen out there in right center field. An absolute blast. And it really was set up, Len, by his patience. Laid off the first two pitches he saw, got the count in his favor, and when he saw a pitch in the strike zone, he unleashed a quick swing on that baseball. How long do you think he'll be hitting seventh? Just wonder if there's another league we can send him up to. A long way to go, and a lot of hitters can hit in 2-0 counts, but very impressive start for the young man. Six three Braves and still only one out and it's three and oh on Nate McLeod he's got to get it together three and one 
Yeah, it's never too early in the season to keep an eye on that pitch count. Big Z over 30 now in the ball game. And he just walked the crowd. Larry has already made a trip to the mound. And I think he might have to get on the phone. He and Lou are talking right now in the dugout. As they look over that Braves lineup card. Well, and Giovanni Soto with a trip to the mound here to stall for a little bit of time. That's something you like to see more of from Gio this year. Understand what's happening, understand the timing of it, and the Cubs right now need some time to get a relief pitcher going in that bullpen. Hard to believe we're seeing that in the bottom of the first inning. Sean Marshall is going to get up. Derek Lowe showing bunt and takes a strike. Zambrano has faced eight and he's only recorded one out. Z thought about second, but he'll get it to Fontenot at first to sacrifice for low and he'll bring up Cabrera for the second time this inning. Braves had a good offensive spring down in the Grapefruit League. They hit 289 as a team. I don't even think Bobby Cox expected this kind of an outburst against Carlos Zambrano in the first inning of opening day. Cabrera walked to start the game. Outside 2 and 0. Cubs do have an update tomorrow. Would you hate to start the season using your relief this early? So, see, just trying to get through this first inning. Ideally, he does get through this first inning without any more run scoring and then has some very economical innings after the first and get a little bit deeper into the ball game. You're right. You hate to get into that bullpen too much too soon into a season. There's still a buzz here in the ballpark after that Jason Hayward home run. Fans have been eagerly anticipating his debut here with the Atlanta Braves, and I don't know how he could do much better than he did. Three and two. We talk all the time about certain power hitters. The ball sounds different off their bat. It had a different sound. It sounded like he literally broke the ball. Now, catchers have a saying when they see one like that, that ball got small fast because it was going away from Giovanni Soto in a hurry. Another broken bat. This little floater is caught by Terrio. And finally, the first inning is over. The Cubs got three, but the Braves got six. For the 20 year old in his first major league at bat. Hey, kids, have you ever dreamed of running the bases at Wrigley Field? Now you can. The Cubs are proud to present Family Sundays at the friendly confines this spring. Purchase four tickets to any Sunday home game in April or May, and each child 15 and younger, and maybe a Cubs broadcaster or two, in your group will get the chance to run the bases following the game. Tickets are limited, so visit Cubs.com to order today. Well, I guess we know one thing. Cubs are going to need at least seven to win. They got three on a bird homer in the first. And as Mike Fontenot gets his first at bat of the year. Now the bad news is the Cubs are down six to three. The good news is they have plenty of time to get back in this ball game against Derek Lowe and others. This is going to land foul. Nice grab by the ball boy. Give it to a kid with a Cubs hat on. I like that. Impartial ball boy.
Mike will be followed by the catcher Soto and the pitcher Zambrano. Just missed on a slow breaker. Three and two on Fontenot. One thing we've also learned walks are bad for the pitchers. Each guy walking somebody in the first and on a run to score. Escobar with a very good arm and he easily throws out Fontenot. Hey, Cup fans, don't forget to visit the WGN Sports Game Zone at WGNTV.com, brought to you by The Great Escape. Go to WGNTV.com and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone for up-to-the-minute stats and information designed to give you everything you need to know during the game. The WGN Sports Game Zone at WGN.com is available for every Cubs game and is brought to you by The Great Escape. Pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and our favorite... More. More called strike to the 08 National League Rookie of the Year. Pretty tight strike zone from Daryl Cousins here early on. Now Daryl Cousins has been a plate umpire that uh, throughout his career usually makes the pitcher throw the ball over the plate. He doesn't go off those corners like you see some umpires do. Which can lead to some high scoring ball games on occasion. Defending division champion Cardinals kicked off their season with a win in Cincinnati. Chris Carpenter, six innings, two runs. Hit hard, but backhanded by Chipper. He gets up quickly, the throw off line, but the tag applied by Gloss. Two down. Albert Pujols, four for five with two homers today as the Cardinals beat the Reds 11 to six. Gio stings that ball down the line, bidding for extra bases, but Chipper Jones, just enough range to get over there and corral it. His throw pulled Gloss off the bag at first base, but he's able to apply the tag before Gio gets to the base. Cubs record for a pitcher, 20 career homers for Big Z, who won his third career silver slugger last year. Ball on the ground, Escobar forcing Gloss to apply the tag yet again. They go down 1-2-3, early on 6-3 Braves. His first inning, couple of big three-run homers, one by Marlon Byrd in his Cubs debut and the other by Jason Hayward in his Major League debut at 6-3 Atlanta. As Carlos tries to settle down just like Derek Lowe did in the top of the inning. After the Marlin Bird home run back in the first inning for the Cubs, four consecutive ground ball outs for Derek Lowe. That's usually an indicator that he's getting that pitch into a location where he wants it with the kind of downward movement that results in a ground ball. And a called strike on Prado, one for one with a run. Pretty loud sound. It might have hit him and then the bat. It looks like he's all right. He is wearing a, an elbow protector. It's not a very big one, but uh, might have taken some of the brunt of that one. Hit right on the outside of that left elbow. Check on Prado. And here's Chipper Jones. The two, obviously, the Hayward home run was crushed, but the two key at bats in that first inning were the, the Jones and McCann bloop singles. Carlos able to make his pitch twice, couldn't get an out.
is the 0-1. That's outside. One ball, one strike. Jones currently tied with Cub Hall of Famer Billy Williams on the all-time home run list with 426. Cubs would like to keep him right there before they leave town. Ground ball, Derek can't get it, but Fontenot does. Good cover by Zambrano, and they get the out throw to third, and they're going to get their seventh run as he airmailed it over Ramirez, and Prado easily scores. One good play and one bad play by the pitcher, and the bad one cost him a run. Derek Lee just deflected that ball enough that Mike Fondo was able to get in front. Zambrano aware that the runner Prado never stopped at second base. Unfortunately, his throw across the diamond to third was well high. You know, one thing that compounded that a little bit, Aramis Ramirez was very late breaking for third base. I think uh, the fact that Prado was as aggressive as he was on the bases might have caught Ramirez by surprise because he was on the move as Zambrano was throwing that ball across the diamond. Didn't really have a target to throw to. So the error on Zambrano allowing Prado to easily score, and it's 2 0 on McCann. Home run swing, he came up empty. Dome back. It's going to be 8-3 as this one lands deep into the seats and right. Brian McCann with a home run. And it's now 8-3 Atlanta, and here comes Lou. Well, they are really starting to tee off on Carlos. We talked about it with Derek Lowe and the adjustment he made after the Marlin Bird home run resulting in four ground ball outs. Carlos just can't get that ball down in the zone, leaving a lot of pitches up and over the plate. So he's done after getting just four outs, 8-3 Atlanta. in right field. Certainly a disappointing opening to this 2010 season for Carlos Zambrano. And Sean Marshall will now enter from the bullpen and hope to hold the Braves at bay until the Cubs can get their offense going more so than they have already. Sean pitched well enough to make the rotation. But the Cubs felt they were better off with him in the bullpen. Cubs with three in their bullpen left handers talking about John Grabo and rookie James Russell. The 0 1 pitch to Troy Gloss. Look down at first, no swing, says Jim Joyce. Well, if you look at the other candidates in the bullpen for the Cubs, Sean Marshall, the guy best suited for it. A lot of different roles with the ball club, but really the only guy that can give you multiple innings out of the bullpen. Gloss floats it down the line, but it's going to hook foul and out of play. Mostly because he was in the competition for a spot in the rotation. He was stretched out in spring training, and if necessary, could probably go three, four, five innings in this ballgame. Well, I think Lou would like to see that happen. Gloss just stays alive. Well, the one thing that may stymie that is the fact the Cubs are trailing by five here early and we may see a parade of pinch hitters for that pitcher spot when we get down there. Well, there's quality and then there's quantity and you always want quality. But at this point for Sean Marshall eating up as many innings as possible. I think takes precedent as gloss is the only brave batter who struggled early. He has struck out twice. First and bat struck out against the Zambrano fastball. This time it's the big sweeping breaking ball from Sean Marshall that gets him out in front, chasing a pitch that ended up in the dirt. Uh, 
Escobar hits it foul. Just an inning and a third for Z. Six hits, eight earned runs. And two long balls. Good curveball for a strike. That's Sean's best pitch. Escobar with a two run single right before the Hayward homer in the first inning. One two from Marshall. The rollover grounder as Escobar hangs in. Little did Sean Marshall know coming to the ballpark today that he'd be pitching in the second inning. Cubs were feeling good up three going to the bottom of the first, but it's been a rough go since. As Marshall gets Escobar on the ground out. The Braves get two more. It's 8 3. One last long winter time will get him. Winter come and get him. Hanging on a tree. Budweiser with full flavor and a crisp finish. It's what we do. And Montench on the keyboards there for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Second time through for the Cubs against Derek Lowe. One strike to the shortstop, Terrio. By the way, the Cubs' top prospect, according to Baseball America, Starlin Castro, will begin the year at Double A Tennessee with Darwin Barney getting the reps at Triple A Iowa, but should the Cubs need a starting shortstop at some point? We hope Ryan Terrio is healthy all year, but I think they'd go right to double A and grab Castro, but they want him to play every day at this point. And if they needed a backup shortstop, they would not hesitate to go get Darwin Barney inside to Terrio. Two yeah, and two. Really, at this point, a lot of it depends on the kind of start that the guys you mentioned get off to. You know, if Castro happens to get off to a blazing hot start, obviously he would be the first guy to come up. But if he happens to struggle a little bit to start the season at double-A, and Darwin Barney is swinging the bat well and playing solid defense, he might be the guy. Well, I don't like the uh, trend here, partner. No. Uh, <laughs> after the three-run homer by Marlon Bird, Derek Lowe has gotten a 5-3, 6-3, 5-3, 6-3, 6-3 roundouts yeah, I mentioned the curse of a sinker ball pitcher he gave up 232 hits a career high last year sometimes those ground balls find holes but unfortunately right now comes batters hitting ground balls right at Braves defenders Fukudome started that first inning rally with a one out single and later later scored on the bird three run homer and he hits this one well the other way Cabrera can't catch it It'll be a double for Koske off to an excellent start. His goal coming into the season was to hit 300. He's batting a thousand after two at bats. Boy, and that is a great approach against a right handed sinker ball pitcher. Stay on the ball and drive it to the other field. If a left handed hitter tries to pull that sinker, and we've seen plenty of it already, you're going to see a lot of ground balls. But that time, Fukudome stayed right on that sinker away from him and drove it down into the left field corner. Lee with a walk his first time. Derek Lowe against Derek Lee as the uh, shadows now covering home plate. This 4:10 local start time has the feel of a league championship series game about uh, 30 years ago 
They used to play day games in October. Cubs worked out mid to late afternoon yesterday and felt that it was good to get used to the, the angles of the sun. Missed on a slider 3 and 0. As Bob mentioned earlier, D. Lee has really crushed D. Low in the past, and that's probably why he hasn't gotten much to hit. Now, especially with the base open and Aramis Ramirez, it, it's kind of puzzling to me because uh, for me, Aramis is a real good low ball hitter, but he hasn't had much success against the sinker baller, Derek Lowe. And Ramirez. Uh, Two for 14 now, lifetime. No home runs, no extra base hits. And a similar story for Alfonso Soriano, who in my eyes is a very good low ball hitter, but in 56 at bats, he struck out 14 times against Derek Lowe. Lowe has never been on the disabled list. This is his 14th major league season. 12 wins in eight straight years, longest among active pitchers. Fukudome has to hold at second as Escobar has been busy the last couple of innings, two outs. I said it somewhat facetiously the other day, but I think it may be true when it's all said and done, and this is not a knock on Derek Lowe. It says just how good this Braves rotation is. He might be their fourth best starter. You have Jair Jurgens, Tommy Hansen, and Tim Hudson won't even pitch in this series. Now, sometimes the opening day starter isn't necessarily your best pitcher. It might be a guy I like Derek Lowe, a veteran who, in the eyes of his pitching coach Roger McDowell and his manager Bobby Cox, deserves the honor of pitching opening day, not necessarily because he has the best stuff. Ramirez to deep left. Cabrera is going to watch it, and it goes a two-run homer to make it eight to five. There's the low ball hitter we know. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We're only in the third inning. That is the fourth home run of this game. That the ball was really jumping in batting practice. Of course, both teams were hitting off of coaches throwing 60 miles an hour, but it has continued here against the starters in this game. Ramirez knew where that was headed, so did Derek Lowe. A deep drive down that left field line for a two run home. Harlan Bird hit a three run shot. And his initial at bat is a cup. Slider strike one and one. Talk about spring training and how much does it mean? Well, Aramis didn't hit any home runs in Arizona. Didn't seem to matter. Save the bullets for opening day. Bird waves at strike three, the first punch out for low. Ramirez a blast. It's now 8-5 to the last of the third. The two-run homer, it's 8-5 to five as Jason Hayward gets a big hand from the audience. 20-year-old phenom with a long three-run homer in the first inning off the Cubs starter, Carlos Zambrano. The 1-0 pitch is a strike. He is in no hurry to make contact, and that is a great compliment, especially for a 20-year-old in the big leagues. Lined and caught by Derek Lee. In case you're joining us late today, back in the first inning with a couple of teammates aboard, Jason Hayward made his presence felt in this ball game. First at bat in the major leagues, a long 
and home run to the back of the Braves bullpen in right field. He should have just retired after that. It's all downhill now. McClough takes a strike. Well, Sean Marshall three up, three down, trying to settle down this game, which still has a long way to go. Other action today, the White Sox behind Mark Burley, who did it all. Three hits and seven shutout innings and made one of the best defensive plays you'll ever see. They beat the Indians six to nothing in a game that took two hours and 24 minutes. Canerco and Rios homered for the White Sox. And great to have Cubs chairman Tom Ricketts, his brother Todd, wearing the Cubs cap. The Cubs owners here in Atlanta, very excited to be here as they ride that emotional roller coaster. Well, I hope those seats have uh, seat belts because it will be a roller coaster ride this year. It always is. Two, two to McLeod. He swung at the high pitch and missed it. Second strikeout for Marshall. Yeah, that's the equalizer, Lynn. You know, we talk a lot of times how a pitcher executes a perfect pitch and a batter still gets a base hit. Well, that time John Marshall threw a horrible pitch and McLeod swung right through it anyway. Marshall's splits are hard to ignore as a starter in his career, a 4.86, but as a reliever, 3.15. He has simply been a lot better coming out of the bullpen. was ready to head into the dugout. Daryl Cousins wouldn't give it to him. No, he's not going to go off that plate. That was a backdoor breaking ball that Geo caught right on the outside corner, but didn't get the call. But he gets the strikeout anyway. That's three for Marshall. Five up, five down for him. Eight, five Atlanta. And Sports on the U is brought to you by Bud Light. The sure sign of a good time. Here we go. It's been a wild start to this season. And just think we have 161 <laughs> more after this. We're only in the fourth inning. We've seen 13 runs. And it's a, it's a little thing. But with all the angst spent Discussing Alfonso Soriano as a Cubs leadoff hitter the last uh, two and a half years. He's going to lead off the fourth. <laughs> Batting sixth in the lineup, but playing leadoff man here in this inning. Cue shot. Low gets off quickly. And Gloss takes that throw. Know that you spent many sleepless nights fretting over your lineups in Arizona as Lou does here. Some of it may be a little overrated. Bottom line is you, you generally put your on base guys at the top, your sluggers in the middle, and your lightest hitters at the bottom. That's pretty simple. Pretty simple. You know what complicates it is when you have a lot of moving parts. And we may get to that point this year with Lou Pinella, depending on how guys start the season. We know he wants to get Tyler Colvin in that lineup on a semi regular basis. Same thing for Xavier Nady. Another ground ball, right to Chipper Jones at third. That'll be easy. You know, when you're flipping guys in and out of the lineup and Maybe playing some platoons at different positions. That's when you really start to fret over the lineup and how does it best fit together on a given day. It's been 
pretty simple for low. If he's getting contact on the ground, he's turned that into outs. But anything in the air has been trouble for him. The Cubs have hit two home runs. A kick in the 0 1. 1 and 1 to Soto. Eric Lowe from the Detroit area. Dearborn, Michigan. Thought he was going to get traded in the offseason, but the Braves couldn't find any takers, so they dealt Javier Vasquez to the Yankees. Chopper to Jones, and it's fair. And that's it. Three ground outs for Lowe in the fourth. The even innings have been a lot better for him than the odds. Let's try the low fat Western egg white muffin melt made the way you want. Build your better breakfast at Subway today. Subway, eat fresh. Sean Marshall in relief of Carlos Zambrano. Top of the order. Cabrera batting right handed against the southpaw takes ball one. Just an inning and a third for Carlos. Eight runs on six hits. Zambrano's ERA after one start is 54. The feeling it'll go down every start. And as Ramirez throws out Cabrera. I sure hope it does. Yeah, uh, we've got problems. Yeah, Carlos just didn't seem to have real good command. Obviously, left a lot of pitches up, but didn't have the same kind of movement that he normally has on that sinker. Sean has not allowed a base runner since he came on. That was in the second. Prado has scored twice. Fastball missed low and inside. 2 0. Oh. Rookie lefty James Russell was loosening just in case with the pitcher spot on deck when Soto made the final out of the top of the fourth. We'll probably see young James Russell at some point today. The way Marshall is pitched, Bob, if he keeps it 8 5, I, I think he's going to lead off the next inning. I think you're right. I, I think the only reason they had Russell throwing in the bullpen was if they had an opportunity to score some runs when they got down to that pitcher spot. Yeah, as Marshall reports a second out of the inning on a punch out of Prado. Hey, Cup fans, Wrigleyville Rooftops has premier seating for up to 200 guests for corporate gatherings, family reunions, and bachelor or bachelorette parties. Individual and group tickets are available for all games. For more details, go to www.wrigleyvillerooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. Chipper Jones has had to get used to over the last you know, four years not making the postseason. And next year, something that'll be even more strange for him, playing for somebody other than Bobby Cox. 426 homers, all with Bobby as his manager. That's the fourth most for one player under one manager. Mark McGuire with 497. Under Tony LaRussa, a couple of different stops. 14 straight postseason appearances for the Braves from 91 to 05. We should point out that when the strike happened in 94, 
They were trailing the Expos. But that season never did finish. Call strike three. Five strikeouts for Marshall. Still 8-5 Braves after four. TV.com for complete info and rules. We have our answer. Sean Marshall getting handshakes all around. Two and two-thirds. Spotless with five strikeouts. As he gives way to pinch hitter Chad Tracy. Second big league team for Tracy, the former Diamondback. Was a non roster invitee to spring training and he beat out Kevin Millar. Normally, you'll see him pinch hit a little bit later on in games, but as we talked about earlier, you don't want to save Chad Tracy until the ninth inning when hard throwing left hander Billy Wagner is likely to appear if the Braves have the lead. Tracy, a career 280 hitter at the major league level. Back to back seasons in 05 and 06 with the Diamondbacks when he hit a total of 47 homers and 152 runs driven in. Suffered a right knee injury that required surgery, had a lot of problems, and is really just getting back into full game shape once again. He draws the lead off walk. And you'll see a lot of that from Chad Tracy throughout the year as well. Real good eye at the plate, very selective hitter, will make that opposing pitcher work. Now the even innings have been one, two, three for low. The odd ones, he's given up runs. Top of the Cubs order rolling around here. Sounds good to me. And that has done the damage. Terrio is 0 for 2 as he takes a breaker for a strike. Good hit and run candidate here. Cubs are down three, but it's only the fifth inning. So Lucan. Still managed pretty aggressively. That's a strike. 0 oh 2. Even when Derek Lowe throws it straight, it still isn't. He doesn't throw anything straight. It's, it's an accident if it comes out of his hand and goes straight. His fastball always has that tailing, sinking motion. Hit hard, but right at the shortstop, and they're going to get Tracy. Might have a replay of where he was when the ball was caught. I didn't see him leaning towards second, but at any rate, Escobar was able to double him off just like that. Two outs. Yep. Uh, just a couple of steps towards second base and strong arm by Escobar across the diamond to get Tracy before he could scramble back to the bag at first. Jose Fukudome leading the National League in hitting. Perfect two for two. Line drive base hit to right, line drive double to left. He likes opening day. His Cubs debut featured a game tying three run homer a couple of years ago. the Cubs new hitting coach for a decade and a half with Texas a two two from low and he has just missed a couple of times in this sequence Yet again, Darrell Cousins pretty stingy on those corners. You see where McCann sets up. That ball never does get to the corner. He made it look good, but that was never in the strike zone. Payoff delivery and Coast K's on for the third time. Cubs making another tweak to their coaching staff. Devonta Jesus, a former Cubs shortstop, former special assistant to the manager, takes over at first, and Matt Sinatro, now Lou Pinella's special assistant.
Derek Lee clubs that one to deep right center. McLeod this back on it, reaches up, makes the catch. What a grab by McLeod to rob Derek Lee, probably of an RBI double. His hamstring looks fine from here as he keeps it an 8-5 game. Berkeley is today's hit the jackpot with Powerball contestant. If the Cubs hit a home run in the next inning, Edward will win 100 tickets to win the Powerball jackpot. Wednesday's jackpot is worth $125 million. Got the right guys coming up next inning for the Cubs. Aramis Ramirez, Marlon Bird, and Alfonso Soriano. All three capable of going deep. Good luck. And good luck to left-hander James Russell. This is his major league debut. 6'4", 200 pounds, born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Wearing his dad's old number 40. Former big league closer Jeff Russell, a right-hander, is in attendance today. James came out of nowhere. The former 14th round pick. Is in the majors, one and one to count. I'm Brian McCann. Working quickly. Two balls and a strike. Went to high school in Colleyville, Texas. Attended Navarro Junior College and was a Longhorn, University of Texas. McCann pulls it on the ground right to Fontenot. Now Troy Gloss. Struck out against Zambrano, fanned against Marshall. So three at bats, three different pitchers. See Gloss still wearing the wraparound shades, even though the sun has completely enveloped the home plate up higher. As a matter of fact, most of the infield at this point, with the exception of the dirt area on the right side. However, the background is still very bright. I don't know how guys do that. I couldn't hit with sunglasses. On. I couldn't hit without sunglasses. On. Much more common now. That's out into the gap. Bird's going to keep Gloss to a single. I got a good trivia for you, partner. Okay. Troy Gloss is now the uh, 11th opening day first baseman for the Braves over the last 12 years. Over that stretch, can you name the guy who got two opening day starts? Well, my initial guess would be the crime dog, Fred McGriff. That is not correct. Not correct. I'll give you some names. Ryan Klesko, Andre Scalaraga, DJ Serhoff, Robert Fick, Julio Franco, Mark Teixeira, Adam LaRoche, Rico Bronia. I'd probably go with LaRoche of that group. Ding, ding, ding. All right. That is correct. 05 and 06. So it's been a revolving door. That door figures to revolve even more. I don't think Troy Gloss is the long term answer at first base for the Braves, but he's manning that position opening day 2010. 0 1 to Escobar took a big hack. Keeping with the theme while we're on it, Marlon Bird. The sixth opening day center fielder the last six years for the Cubs. Care to name the previous five? Uh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the fans think about that for a second. Fukudome drifting over to his right. Corey Patterson, Juan Pierre, Alfonso Soriano, Felix P.A., and that guy, Kosuke. We are email accessible. Len and Bob at Chicago now, rather at Tribune.com. And it's Twitter.com. You can follow us there. 
slash Lynn and Bob. It's Lynn and Bob at Tribune.com. A strike to Hayward. Based on what I've read, Bob, I don't think Bobby's going to sit Hayward against lefties. He's going to play him every day. That could change if he struggles, but he already has a platoon working in left with Cabrera and Diaz. Russell's 1-1. One, one. Popped up, but no play for Aramis. Well, it really seems to make sense. Uh, you know, Hayward was a guy who played against righties and lefties every day at the minor league level and carried a 318 average through three seasons of the minors. So uh, I agree with you. Unless he really shows that he's struggling against lefties, or maybe there's a particular kind of lefty that gives him some problems. But uh, I think you're going to see this guy play about 155 to 162 games this year. Call strike three, so a nice first inning for James Russell. 8 5 Atlanta. Outside border for a strike, 0 and 1. Swing and a miss at a sinker. Low just over 70 pitches now. We talked briefly about Derek Lowe and his mechanical tweak uh, in spring training. If you watch that front arm, his left arm, the glove hand, when he turns and makes his rotation toward home plate, he tries to keep that left arm as high as he can. It's dropped down as the game has gone on. Ramirez slaps one past Chipper Jones at third base. Should be a base hit. Let's check out who's moving forward with Toyota. Career year for Marlon Bird last year, his final year in Texas. And the first Cub to homer in his debut, his first at bat as a Cub since Henry Rodriguez in 1998. That was opening day of that year. Toyota and your local Toyota dealers, official partner of the Chicago Cubs. Ramirez with a very short lead at first. He now has been given a base hit. Why did it take him so I, long? I don't know. The ball was hit like a bullet. Chipper just dropped to his knees, kind of leaning to his left, and that ball was actually past him before he had a chance to field it. It's that one well. McLeod, however, running very well, diving and making the catch. That's two of them today for Nate McLeod. And a double play is Ramirez. And Ramirez was insisting that McLeod drop the ball. Aramis was three quarters of the way to second base. He thought he saw the ball come out of the glove, so he just went to second and stayed there. Well, Bird is standing at first. Ramirez is at second. And Lou is talking to Jim Wolf, the third base umpire. Cubs think they're first and second, no outs. But they're calling it a catch. And a double play. This is not reviewable. We can. The umpires can't. Oh, it did come oh, out. It oh, it did. Yes, it did. Now, they are going to get together and discuss it. You clearly see the ball got out of the glove of McLeod. All right, for me, this is why... I, you know, we have the technology. We've got the replay. We clearly see that ball is out. This could possibly affect the outcome of this ball game. 
And it's a great play by Ramirez. He saw the ball on the ground and went to second base. It was the right play from his standpoint. And I just don't know if any of these umpires had any sort of view of what happened. Well, they got it wrong. And in their defense, they should be able, as you said, to look at the replay. Absolutely. I mean, that was a play you could clearly see by our replay that that's going to be tough for any one of the four umpires positioned around the infield to really see if that ball came out or not by the way the ball rolled behind his glove. And he was able to quickly scoop it up with his throwing hand. I don't believe any of the umpires really had a good look at that play. I'm not a big fan of the human element of the game if the human element is wrong. Well, he sold it really well. Yeah, I mean, he, he immediately picked it up. We could not tell if he didn't catch it, or at least I couldn't with the naked eye. Well, I was watching Ramirez the whole way just to see how far he was going to go towards second base, and he apparently saw it from his angle because there was no hesitation. He went on to second base and was giving the safe sign that the ball was down on the grass. If Aramis Ramirez can see it from his position between first and second, how can four umpires miss it? get started already on opening day well that is potentially oh, it's huge enormous Soriano should be the tying run at the plate Ramirez did the right thing that was not a mistake on his part and the 0-1 waves of the slider he doesn't need a replay he knows yeah you're right that's exactly what happened Just like that, the inning is over. And I guess they needed an umpire. Thomas Ramirez was just chatting with him a couple of seconds ago and essentially telling him what happened. And you see as Aramis heads towards second base, creeping, creeping. Jim Wolf just now getting out into a position to possibly make a call. And this inning's going to start with either an infield hit or an error on Mike Fontenot. A little slow roller to the right side he couldn't come up with cleanly. So McClough is on. And the pitcher low will try to bunt him into scoring position. Just past the mound. On oh, no, to the backhand side. Looked like that ball hit off the heel of his glove a little bit. With McLeod's speed, I don't know if he would have had a chance to get him anyway. Going to go with a hit. Low already with a sacrifice bunt. Already squaring. As Russell will toss to first. It is an error on Fontenot. It's a Cubs second error. Chopper right off the plate as Russell will throw oh, the hey. bike. See a Cubs game from the front row at Wrigley? Now you can. Visit Cubs.com. Click on the CBOE front row seats auction to bid on tickets in the front row behind home plate and along the first base line. Front row seats will be auctioned off to every game all season long. Don't miss your chance. Go to Cubs.com. Check out the CBOE front row seats auction today. Well, one thing we've, one. we've learned early on in this game, Nate McLeod's hamstring is not bothering him. <laughs> He's covered ground to both his right and his left to make some nice running catches on some hard hit balls today. Oh, and two on Cabrera. James Russell's first career strikeout came against Jason Hayward, both making their major league debuts today.
Russell has all four pitches. He'll sink his fastball too. Throw that change up to a right handed hitter. There it is. Cabrera went down to get it and hit it foul. Two time defending NL champion Phillies continue to slug as they crush the Nationals 11 to 1 in D.C. today. Placido Polanco and Ryan Howard went deep. For the Phillies. President Obama threw out the first pitch. That smoke, but way foul. Ryan Zimmerman was the catcher as the president tossed out the first pitch. There's Jeff Samarja in the Cubs pen. Change up from Russell two and two. You're keeping a scorecard at home. The uh, Phantom double play in the sixth went eight six three. Clouth to Escobar to Gloss. I still can't believe it. Three to the count. Mr. Cabrera happens to move it up a notch and put together a Hall of Fame type career here in Atlanta. You can name a street after him and call it the Milky Way. Ooh, if that would be appropriate. It'd be one of the few streets here in Atlanta that isn't Peachtree something or other. Or Hank Aaron yeah. Street. Peachtree Lane, Peachtree Street, Peachtree Circle. Fly to right. Fukudome drifting, now backpedaling. He has it. As McLeod tags and easily gets to third. I wonder what McLeod is telling Aramis Ramirez over there at third base. I had it all the way. Yeah, your eyes must be deceiving you. That ball was in my glove, and I just grabbed it out with my bare hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> the thing about it with television these days, there's no way around it. I mean, if it were a minor league game, he could, I caught it. Mm -hmm. Prove it. All Aramis has to do is go see now Masamoto, the Cubs video coordinator, and he'll show him. Prado with a roller up the middle, gobbled up by Fontenot. The bullpen's really settled things down. Now the question is, can the Cubs come back in the late innings and trail by three after six? Test drive a 2010 Honda Accord. A lot of big storylines today. Bobby Cox beginning his final season as a Braves manager. Jason Hayward beginning what looks to be a very long career. Marlon Byrd leading off his Cubs career with a three-run homer. Right now it's eight to five, and both teams now into the bullpen. Peter Moylan's been a very important part of the Braves bullpen the last few years when he's been healthy. They're pretty solid at the back end with Takashi Saito and Billy Wagner as you'll probably see those guys in the eighth and the ninth. Well, as Mike Fontenot steps in, he has an error now taken away. They have given McClouth an infield single.
the sixth. So McLeod's excellent day continues. Change up outside from Moylan, who's from Australia. We're going to see some pinch hitters here at some point. We'll see one in the uh, third spot this inning behind Soto. Tapped. Moylan took a loss for the out. Thoughts on Derek Lowe today? He looked pretty good. I mean, he had the good sinker working. As you said, it was kind of an every other inning deal for him there. He got some up, and when he did, they got hit hard. But uh, all things considered, for a 38-year-old opening day starter, I thought he had pretty good stuff. You know, and even though managers try to extend their starting pitchers in spring training and get them to a point where you can work deep into a ball game, I think with a three-run lead here, Bobby Cox decided to take... Uh, what he got from Derek Lowe today, take it as a positive, turn it over to the bullpen, and move on. 78 pitches over six innings for Lowe. All five runs came via the home run. Three run shot, Marlon Bird. Two run blast, the Ramos Ramirez. Swing and the miss. Good slider from Moylan coming from the side. Tyler Colvin. Is going to bat after Soto as he tries to stay hot. Led the majors with 36 hits in spring training. And I just think Lou is going to save Baker and Needy for potential. Ninth inning matchups against Billy Wagner. Struck him out on a slider. Well, we've talked off the air about this. Uh, it really is an advantage. I mean, you have to have a good one, but having a left handed throwing closer. Think about the guys, Bob, in this league who can really hurt you Ryan Howard, Jason Hayward now. Prince Fielder. Andre Ethier in L.A. Especially if it's a left-hander that can touch triple digits at times. Billy Wagner, I don't know if he still humps it up there that hard, but uh, still a very firm fastball. There was a time he could throw 100 miles an hour. Swing and the miss by Colvin. As he missed the change, one and one. Slugged a 753 clip in Arizona. Got under it is Hayward. Able to locate it. And a 1 2 3 for Moylan. A stretch here in Atlanta. Braves 8, Cubs 5. As Jeff Samarja gets ready to work. Sing, take me out to the ball game here in Atlanta. You know the word, sing along. Chicago Cubs baseball and WGN Sports on the U is sponsored in part by the Illinois Lottery Mega Millions. 
Tuesday's Mega Millions jackpot is $76 million. Your annual salary. Uh, tip money. <laughs> well, if we've learned one thing today, the left-handers have had a lot more success than the right-handers against this Braves lineup. As they knocked around Carlos Zambrano, but Sean Marshall and James Russell, four and two-thirds combined, only one hit and no runs. So Jeff Samarja will face Jones, McCann, and Gloss for the Braves here in the seventh. get back to action. Another note on that Phillies 11-1 win at Washington. Roy Halladay's NL debut went very well, thank you. Seven innings, one run. Ooh. So they are clearly the team to beat in that division, if not the entire league once again. Samarja with a nice tune up on Saturday afternoon at Chase Field back in Phoenix against the Diamondbacks. One of his cleanest innings all spring. That's foul. Jeff made a trip to Mexico, made a few starts, really worked on his curveball there. And went into spring training battling for a spot in the rotation. But the mindset coming out of the bullpen is not to set up guys for later at bats. He's going to face Chipper Jones once today. Lou wants him to be very aggressive in this short relief role. And we talked about it during a spring training telecast. We've talked at length the last couple of years about Jeff Samarja developing that third pitch and. Most of the time we assumed it was going to be that slider, but he's also working on a straight changeup that he pitched really well with at a couple of minor league games. He said he had a lot of confidence in it. He threw it in one and oh, two and one counts, three and one counts when a hitter was looking for a fastball. But in this role that he's filling right now, he really just needs to throw strikes with his sinking fastball and his splitter. Lead off free pass. Another one of those big time power left handed hitters we need to add to the mix. Brian McCann. McCann went deep off Zambrano. That ended his day back in the second. Jones takes off and steals that base on Jeff Samarja. Ryan Terrio was trying to ask for time. Jones just absolutely took off. Was halfway to second before Samarja even started to the plate. It's tough, for, especially for young pitchers. Uh, occasionally, you have to divide your focus. You at least have to pay some attention to the base runner over there at first. Make sure that he is stopped. He doesn't have a walking lead. That time, Samarja was so focused on the hitter, Brian McCann, at the plate, he paid no attention to Chipper Jones, and the veteran Chipper Jones made him pay. We talked about the Brian McCann home run back in the second. Him on a sinker that didn't up and out over the plate. And he got every bit of it. Can asks for time. Jones in scoring position. Samarja trying to. Give the offense a chance here the last couple of innings. They're already down three. And it's three and one on McCann. Mets over the Marlins 7 1 today. Johan Santana beat Josh Johnson. Nice weather in New York, 66 degrees. 
All four back to back walks. Gloss one for three. Pirates club the Dodgers 11 to 5. Zach Duke over Vicente Padilla. Garrett Jones picked up where he left off last year. He had two home runs. Ryan Domit with a home run. 72 degrees in Pittsburgh. Beautiful. Can we hope for maybe 60 next Monday? You, you can hope for it. <laughs> John Grabo is on the bullpen mound. Well, I'll tell you what. The first thing we hope for at home is dry weather. That's number one. And then secondarily, warmth. Rockies over the Brewers 5 3 a final. Ubaldo Jimenez beat Giovanni Gallardo. Carlos Gomez had four hits in his Brewer debut, including a home run, but it wasn't enough. Carlos Gonzalez had four hits for the Rockies. Samarja with another three ball count. It's full on loss. The three two ball four on a really close pitch. He has walked them loaded. Throw that sinking, tailing fastball to the outside corner. We've talked about the veteran Daryl Cousins behind the plate. He's not going to go off of those corners and give the pitchers the benefit of the doubt. Pitch appeared to be just a little bit off the corner. Boss with the take and a ball four to load him up for Udell Escobar. This is uh, probably Jeff's final batter with Grabo getting ready. And his sights are set on Hayward, who's on deck. Corner men in. They will give up a run to get a double play up the middle. Not going to get it, however. That's going to split the gap for Escobar. Jones is in. McCann scores. They're going to try to get Gloss in as well. And it's a bases clearing double. Escobar continues to rake with runners in scoring position. He has five RBIs today. Mentioned it earlier, Bob. This guy last year loved hitting with men on base. Right, that's a belt high fastball up and out over the plate at 92 miles an hour to a good first ball fastball hitter. And he does what you would expect a good first ball fastball hitter to do. He ropes it into the gap in left center to drive in three. And now that it's 11 to 5, Lou's going to let Samarja face Hayward. Swing and the miss. The extra base hits hurt you, but that's now four walks and a hit batter that have resulted in runs. Backhanded by Lee, high toss. Samarja can't get it. Graves will get their 12th run as Escobar scores on a very rare bad throw from Derek Lee.
Now Derek had to go a long way to get to that ball and backhand it. Big target, big tall target in Jeff Samarja over there to cover first, but D. Lee airmails it over everybody. Hayward's going to move on up to second base while Escobar comes around and scores from second base on the overthrow. So it's 12 to 5. As Derek is charged with the Cubs' second error. It'll probably get lost if this score holds up in the game story, but can't forget that McLeod catch that wasn't a catch, ended up being a double play. The Cubs would have had the tying run at the plate in the form of home run hitter Alfonso Soriano, but instead, it was a double play. Uh, we all know what a game of momentum baseball can be and the Cubs would have had runners at first and second nobody out as you said Soriano coming to the plate may have forced Bobby Cox to make a move earlier than he wanted to with his bullpen you never know what might have transpired but ended up a double play taking the Cubs right out of a possible rally so Samarja with the strikeout strike that time that ball up above the belt to a small hitter Eric Hinsky makes his Braves debut he'll get a World Series ring as a member of the Yankees last year Eric Hinsky has played in the last three World Series for three different teams the Red Sox in 07 the Rays in 08 and then the Yankees in 09 Hayward at second. He reached on the D. Lee error. Four runs here in the inning. High drive, and it's pretty well hit. Bird back on it. Hits the track, then the wall. Stays in the field of play. Hinsky trying to get three out of it, and he's in. Hayward scoring. It's a pinch hit RBI triple for Eric Hinsky. Cubs would have been better off if that ball had bounced over the fence. I give a lot of credit to Eric Hinsky. How many guys do you see in the game nowadays hit this kind of drive to right center field and stand at home plate and watch it? But he busted it out of the batter's box to at least give himself a chance at a triple. And when Fontenot's throw is offline at third base, he slides in with that triple. So another Cubs right-hander getting bludgeoned here in Atlanta as Jeff Samarja walked the bases loaded and leaves after allowing five runs it's 13 to 5 Braves top shelf bar indoor and outdoor seating and other benefits that allow for a truly all-inclusive game day experience membership includes parking for every home game to reserve your season tickets in the PNC Club of Chicago call 773 404 4200 right hander Justin Berg with a runner at third and only one out facing Melky Cabrera the infield is in it's 13 to 5 Atlanta Bob this is another thing that doesn't stand out but the Cubs have made some pretty sloppy throws today. Yeah, and, and needless to say, it's uh, created opportunities for the Atlanta Braves that they probably should not have had in this ball game. But all you can do is hope to come back on Wednesday and tighten it up a little bit, make better throws, anticipate a little bit more on defense, and hopefully avoid some of those mistakes that create opportunities for the opposition. To second, Fontenot. And Hinsky who holds it third and gets the out at first. Braves sending at least nine to the plate in two different innings. I 
mean, especially those youngsters in the bullpen, and we're seeing a couple of them here in the ball game today. They're going to need all the help they can get. They, they don't need their defense to throw the ball around and give the opposition extra at bats in an inning with runners on base. They're just trying to get their feet wet here at the major league level, find what their role is with this ball club, and they're going to need their defense to make plays behind them. The 1 0 to Prado up the middle, 14 to 5. up above the belt on the inside part of the plate. Prado just guided it right back up the middle of the field for an easy RBI. Chipper Jones, ball one. This is how quickly things can change. We were talking two days ago about how with the Tyler Colvin situation, the Cubs would rather have not had tomorrow off and to give a guy some rest but with the the pitching today the starter only getting four outs I'm glad the Cubs are off tomorrow and I know the pitching coach and the manager will be after this one such high expectations going into opening day you want to play a clean ball game and you hope you pitch well you hope you hit well make all the plays on defense and unfortunately uh, very little of that has happened today for the Cubs but finish this one up take an off day tomorrow clean your palate and come right back after to get on Wednesday three and one on Jones six runs seven Line shot caught by Fontenot. Nicely done. The diving grab by Mike Fontenot. And the inning is finally over. Ten Braves come to the plate. Not too many positives today, but there's one of them. 14 to 5 Braves. Ball everywhere. Well, a beautiful day here in Atlanta. The uh, Game has not been pretty for the Cubs as they trail by nine. And another debut, Takashi Saito will make his Braves debut. Omar Infante has also come in, spelling Chipper Jones at third. Slider missed low. One and one to Terrio. Off day tomorrow, then Ryan Dempster will make his season debut, and it doesn't get much easier for the Cubs offense against right hander Jair Jurgens. And then Thursday night, a couple of guys who battled for the rookie of the year last year, Randy Wells and Tommy Hansen. And it's off to the Queen City, Cincinnati for the weekend. And hit it foul. Randy Wells got a good workout in the bullpen a few hours before the game. Tom Gorzolani over on the right will pitch this weekend in Cincinnati. 
through a minor league game in Arizona yesterday and got here last night. Swing and the miss struck him out on a slider. Terry 0 for four. He wants Saito out there on the mound, and he doesn't really have the kind of stuff that's going to light up a radar gun or really open a scout's eyes, but he has tremendous command. Spotting that fastball just off the outside corner, pushing hitters off the plate when he comes inside, and then drops that 80 mile an hour slider just off the outside corner where Terrio couldn't make contact. Good matchup here, guys, who had a lot of success over in Japan. Saito against Fukudome. Fastball strike. Oh, and two. Just throwing a couple of heaters. See Brian McCann going with the hand signals as opposed to the finger signals. Usually that's an indication that the pitcher doesn't have real good eyesight. You notice it more in night games when there's a lot of shadows around home plate and the bright lights above the stadium. Sometimes a pitcher has a hard time seeing the fingers, so McCann uh, using the touch system. Every one of those touches means something. Saito, 14 years with Yokohama. Fukudome was with Chunichi in the same league. It's caught by Cabrera. First time Fukudome's been retired today. And 81 jammed into Turner Field today. And the home team is not disappointed. Cubs led right off the bat on a three run homer from Marlon Byrd, but then the Braves came back with six in the bottom of the first, two more in the second, and haven't looked back. Held up. Saito pitched with Boston last year. Back in the National League, three years with the Dodgers, his ERA was under two. As I said before, basically doing it with two pitches that he can spot on both sides of the plate, move them up and down in the strike zone. Watch Brian McCann, the Braves catcher, as he moves on to the corners for Saito. And when he misses, he usually misses in his favor. At that time, he was trying to hit the outside corner with a fastball, and rather than leave it over the plate where Derek Lee could do some damage, he missed further away from the plate. Try to go out there again. Well, that was a laser beam straight 90 mile an hour fastball. Derek Lee trying to leave Earth. Hit a long home run that time. Pulled his head just a little bit, enough to miss the pitch. Swing and a miss. Saito comes back and strikes out Lee. As the Cubs go down in order, bottom eight, all Braves today. Organization as an assistant to 
Jim Hendry and his number 31 was retired twice last year by the Cubs and here in Atlanta by the Braves. Back to the uh, last time these two teams met up on opening day, Greg Maddox got the win for the Braves. 1993. April 5th. Two and all from Bird to McCann. Well, if you've been paying attention, walks are not the way to go today. The Cubs have walked five Braves hitters. Four of those guys have come around to score. Big day for the rookie Hayward in his debut. Billy Wagner will not be in a safe spot. Bobby Cox is going to line him up like he would in a tight game. It's Moylan, Saito, and Wagner. Too many walks. Too many defensive miscues. Too many home runs allowed. Soto goes out and chats with Bird. Josh Beckett struggled last night. The Red Sox five runs in four and two thirds. The Red Sox came back late to win. Uh, there's a report that he has agreed to a four year extension worth $68 million. Ooh. comes Larry chat with Berg. Berg's really having a hard time finishing his pitches. Everything he's delivering right now is up around the belt or higher. This needs to really reach out there, pick up his target, really extend, find a release point that's further out in front of his body. Try to get that ball down at the bottom part of the strike zone. Well, then it's hard not to get discouraged when opening day goes the way this one has for the Cubs, but you've got to very quickly come to the realization that there's a lot of baseball left to play. You're going to have the occasional stinker, and there's no question this one's been a stinker today. The really good teams find a way to bounce back from those bad games and, and start a winning streak. I think there's ever been a team that's gotten through a full season without having a couple games like this or sometimes a lot of games like this. It's just how you respond and come back out that next day. Three and one. Brewers are talking to Prince Fielder about a long term deal. He is signed through. 2011. Say that he signed through this year, but won't be eligible for free agency until after next year. Another walk. This was Jeff Samarge's problem in the seventh. He walked him loaded. Then we get a pinch runner for McCann. It's Brooks Conrad. David Ross catching the ninth. Escobar fly ball the other way. Fukudome catches it. Conrad comes back, tags, and heads to third. They're at the corners with one out.
just in case. Interesting story about Jason Hayward. We mentioned he's a local guy. The Braves have been as good, if not better, than every major league team in signing local talent. They knew what type of hitter he was. They watched him a lot this summer before his senior year in high school. But by the time he was a senior, and by the time other team scouts got a good look at him, nobody wanted to pitch to him. So a lot of teams didn't actually see what he brings to the table, and some thought he was a little too passive at the plate, but the Braves knew what they had, and there was a lot of nail-biting going on, hoping he would drop to 14, and he did in the first round, and he just picked up his fourth career RBI. A hard-hit single into center. He hits the ball as hard as former Brave Ryan Klesko used to. But Klesko used every muscle fiber in his body to generate that power with his swing. Hayward just very quick with his hands through that hitting zone. We've talked today at length about his patience at the plate. He refuses to swing at bad pitches, and when he does let it go, he is lightning quick with his hands through the hitting zone. And one on McLeod. Fifteen to five. Just look at the location of the pitches that Justin Berg is missing with everything way up above the belt, above the letters. You see Giovanni Soto trying to encourage him to get the ball down, get the ball down, try to give a little bit of a lower target, anything you could do to try to get that pitcher back down into the strike zone. This is the most runs the Cubs have allowed on opening day since 1884, 15-3 loss to a team named New York. Couldn't tell you what their nickname was at the time. The Gothams or something like that, but it's been a while. Full three and two on Fonte on deck. All four. Third walk of the inning. And that's going to do it. Lou Pinella. Make another call to the bullpen here. I think this is a move he would rather not make. We talk about getting guys involved in the action early in the season, but John Grabo figures to be a guy that's going to throw a lot of innings out of that bullpen this year in that seventh and eighth inning role. And if possible, I'm sure Lou would have liked. First of a three game, four day series. You look at the capital. John Grabo against very underrated utility guy Omar Infante, and that's a foul ball. Infante fouled it off himself. Solid numbers last season for John Grabo 62 hits in 72 and a third innings pitched. Fonte hit 305 last year. Could play just about anywhere. A nice piece off the bench. 
Lee will take it unassisted for the second out as the Braves get yet another run. An RBI ground out for Infante. It's 16 to 5. for the sixth time. Popped it up behind third. Terry racing over foul ground. Takes a look. Makes the catch. Ended up almost in the front row. Nicely done by Terry. The Braves add two off to the ninth. 16 to 5 Atlanta. today even with their team down big Billy Wagner making his Braves debut came back last year from Tommy John surgery he didn't pitch a whole lot he came back late with the Mets and Tommy John surgery in September of 08. We were talking about Billy Wagner earlier. He used to possess a, an explosive upper 90, sometimes 100 mile an hour four seam fastball. That one in 96 has a little bit of a wrinkle of a slider. He'll throw to a left handed hitter from time to time, but basically you're going to see a lot of high four seam fastballs. Seven that time, one and one to count. Brooks Conrad tried to come into the game and play second as the Braves had too many men on the field, but there's no two minute penalty for that, unlike hockey. And uh, he didn't realize Martin Prado was still in the game. You, know, you might be able to get away with that in spring training. Just run out and say, hey, Skip wants you in the dugout. I got you. Go on in. Nice game. Yeah, not during the regular season. David Ross is catching. As Wagner comes back, that's golf down the left field line, but Ramirez thinks it's foul, and he's right. He got out of the box. He knew that was hooking foul the whole way. Swing and the miss. That was a slider we were talking about. He uses it sparingly against right handed hitters, but threw a good one that time. Started right in the heart of the plate. Looked like it was going to be a strike. Ended up down and in. Ramirez right over the top. Marlon Bird, the batter. One for three with a three run homer. Should have had another hit. A ball that was deemed caught. By Nate McLeod. It wasn't caught. That's what the umpire said. His former team, Texas, with a walk off win in the ninth, 5 4, as they beat the Blue Jays in a Jared Saltalamachia game ending single. Prado for the second out. Three thousand plus. And they're getting on their feet. And David Ross saw something, maybe an extra ball on the field out at left center, so I'll grab that. Loki Cabrera better hope he doesn't slide. Now he makes a better move to toss it over to the ball dude.
Strike one on Soriano. Back sliders. Wagner rarely throws two breaking balls in a row, especially not to a right handed hitter. But keep in mind, it's Soriano at the plate. The book on him for years has been throwing breaking pitches that start in the strike zone and end up out of the strike zone. Ground ball foul. Should mention just two appearances with the Mets last year and then 15 with Boston. Jeff Baker on deck. If we get that far. 385 career saves, not a safe spot for Wagner. And the one two, swing and a miss, and that'll do it. He fans two in a one two three night. Derek Lowe over Carlos Zambrano. The Braves got a ton of offense today, and they beat the Cubs 16 to 5. We'll be back in a moment.